right, my brothers, sisters, and friends, we truly want to thank and praise the Lord for blessing us to come back to you once again. We want to thank God for his many divine blessings that he has bestowed upon us. Truly, God is good in his mercy and do it forever. We're coming back tonight. I want to send a word to Corey Minor tonight. I want to send a word to Corey Minor. I want to send a warning to Corey Minor and tell him that he needs to start teaching and preaching the truth inspired word of God, that he needs to say what the word says and believe what the word says and not give his own opinion concerning the word of God. You're fighting against the word of God when you're fighting against what the Bible says, when you don't believe what the Bible says. You have your own opinion, your own thoughts. You don't want to adhere to the word of God. So I'm sending a warning to you tonight, Corey Minor. You either believe the word, teach the word, or close your Bible and sit down. You won't win fighting against God. A divided house cannot stand. You cannot say you are of God and then fight against God by not believing his word. All right? Trying to teach what you want to teach instead of believing and teaching what the Word says. Now let's take our Bibles tonight and go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and begin at verse 1. <clears throat> 1 Corinthians chapter 13, begin at verse 1. Now this is a warning to you, Corey. You better adhere to what I'm telling you tonight. Glory be to God, hallelujah. You're leading a lot of people astray. You're causing a lot of people to be lost. You're causing a lot of people to miss out on the blessings of God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You are treading on dangerous ground fighting against God. You won't win, my friend, fighting against God. Now, you, you better quit being stubborn and listen to wisdom. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. All right. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1 says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Now the Bible lets us to know right there in verse 1 that there are two kinds of tongues. Apostle Paul said he speaks with two kinds of tongues. He said he speaks with tongues of men and of angels. To speak with tongues of angels is to speak with a heavenly language. See, there are earthly languages and there are heavenly languages. And when you are filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues, that is an heavenly language. That is a language from God. That is what God chooses to give us when he fills us with his spirit. Glory be to God. That's God's business. If he wants to give his children tongues, from heaven. You don't tell God what to do. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And you're talking about, I heard you mention that you have, uh, you have spoken with tongues before. You have not spoken with tongues before. You have just imitated other people you have heard. You have not been filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. So you lied. You have not had that experience. Nobody gets filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues from heaven and turn around and deny tongues. Nobody. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Unless you become an atheist. All right. Glory be to God. You don't get filled with the power of God and turn around and deny that the power of God exists. Glory be to God. So you have not spoken in tongues. You have imitated others. That tongue that you spoke in was of the devil. I'm beginning now to even question as to whether you're saved or not. Because you don't believe the word of God. You pick and choose what you want out of the Bible. The Bible talks about tongues and prophecy. You're going to gravitate or, or grab prophecy and do away with the tongues. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You don't get a chance to pick and choose what you want to. 
Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Now you either begin to teach and preach the word of God like you should, or you need to close the book and sit down. And all of you out there that are following Corey Manor, you need to think twice. You are not supposed to strengthen the hands of the wicked. Those that don't teach and preach the word of God as the Bible teaches and preaches, you are not supposed to support them. As far as I can see, you're being blessed by the devil because you're going against the word of God. All right? Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Now, I try to give you the benefit of the doubt, but it's not working because I see you now go against the word of God. You want to argue and fight with everybody on this word. I'm sending you a warning from God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You better get it right. You better adhere to the word of God. You better teach and preach the word of God or sit your behind down somewhere. All right. Well, let's take our Bibles and go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and begin at verse 1. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, beginning at verse 1, it says, Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy. Follow after charity, after love, and desire spiritual gifts. We should be desiring spiritual gifts. In order for Apostle Paul to tell us to desire spiritual gifts, suggest to us that spiritual gifts are still in operation. If they were not in operation, then he would not have told us to desire them. All Christians should be desiring spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy. All right? Look at verse 2. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him. Howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries all right let's go back to the beginning to the beginning of that verse for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue where well, the bible is suggesting to us that there are unknown tongues an unknown tongue is a tongue that is unknown it can be unknown to you and unknown to others all right unknown me that is unknown glory be to god so he said for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men, but unto God. So this tongue, according to Apostle Paul, is not unto you, Corey Minor. It is not unto you, it is unto God. It is not unto men, but unto God. Now either you believe what the Bible says, or you don't. Either you are, you are a Christian, or you're not. You don't get a chance to pick and choose what you want to pick and choose. You listen to the word and you obey the word and you believe the word. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So he said, For he that speaketh in unknown tongues speaketh not unto men but unto God. For no man understandeth him. Howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. So in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. It's not for you to understand. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. It's not for you, Corey Minor. Hallelujah. All right? Let's go on. But, but he that prophesieth speak, speaketh unto men to edification and to exhortation and to comfort. All right? So prophecy is speaking unto men for their edification, for their exhortation and their comfort that's what prophecy is for so we are talking about speaking in tongues and we are talking about prophecy and we can't do away with either one of them the apostle paul is presenting both of them to us so you don't have uh the right to do away 
with tongues and keep prophecy. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. This is not your gospel. All right. Look what he says. He says in verse 4, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, but he that prophesieth edifieth the church. So the Bible says that he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. That's what the word says. Then that's what happens. You don't get a chance to say, well, uh, there's nowhere in the Bible that talks about you edifying yourself. The Bible is not for your edification. It's for the, it's for the body. Well, that's not what the word says. It's for you and the body. You're a part of the body. You are a member of the body if you have been baptized into the body. Who do you think you are to say something that the word doesn't say or to take out of the word what you want to take out? You don't get that. You don't have that privilege to do that. Who do you think you are? All right. So he said, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, builds himself up, but he that prophesieth edifies the church. That's what the word says. How are you going to know so much about speaking in tongues and you've never had the experience? How are you going to know so much about being filled with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, and you never had the experience, but yet you know so much? You haven't even had that experience. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. That's why you can't understand anything about it. That's why you can't understand the word. Because you haven't been filled with the spirit. And I question as to whether you're even saved. Since you choose to take out the word what you want to take out. And you don't believe you want to fuss and argue over the word like you know so much. And you don't know much of anything. You need to sit down somewhere and be taught. Up trying to, talk, up trying to teach and instruct the people of God. And you're not even filled with the Holy Ghost. And based on what I can see, you're not even saved. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, the Bible says, but he that prophesied edifies the church. Now, how are you going to fight against that? That's what the word says. All right, verse 5. I would that ye all spake with tongues, but rather that ye prophesied. For greater is he that prophesied than he that speaketh with tongues except he interpret that the church may receive edifying. It even never said, it never says in that scripture that, that prophecy is greater than speaking in tongues, except under one condition. And that is if there is no interpreter. Otherwise, speaking in tongues and prophecy is the same. Neither one is greater than the other one, unless there is no interpreter. How are you going to do away with speaking with tongues and hold on to prophecy? I know how you're going to do, do away with it because you're being used by the devil and you haven't had the experience. And people that have not had the experience, they tend to fight against it. They tend to fight against something they have not had. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And just because they haven't had it, they say, well, it can't be true. Yes, it's true. Then you want to talk about, I'm tired of people talking about their experiences. Well, if we can't talk about, if we can't talk about our experience about being filled with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, based on the scriptures, the Bible teaching it, and you talk about your experience being saved by the power of God, well, if we can't talk about our experience, then you can't talk about your experience. You need to shut up about your experience that you've been saved by the power of God. Since your salvation and experience was supposed to have been based on the Word of God, based on the Bible, just like our experience is based on the Bible and based on the Word of God, if, if we can't talk about our experience, you can't talk about yours. Shut up about your experience, about your salvation that you're supposed to have, which I'm doubting at this point. Since you don't believe the Word of God, you're going to fight against the Word of God. You're going to claim to know God and then fight God. All right. 
So he said, I would rather that ye all speak with tongues, but rather that ye may prophesy. For greater is he that prophesied than he that speak with tongues, except, except, the one condition, except he interpret that the church may be or may receive edifying. Now what you think about that? What you going to do with that? Glory be to God. Hallelujah. All right. Now let's take our Bibles and, and uh, look at verse 18. Stay in that same book and chapter and look at verse 18. I thank my God that I speak with tongues more than ye all. Yet in the church, I had rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice I might teach others also than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. Now, Apostle Paul is talking like this because there were controversy in the church. There was controversy in the church. All right, they were out of order. Glory be to God, hallelujah. If you don't have an interpreter that's going to uh, edify the church, then there need to be no tongue speaking. Let everything be done decently and in order. But Apostle Paul said, I thank my God that I speak with tongues more than ye all. This is the great Apostle Paul said, I thank my God that I speak with tongues more than all of you. Fight him. You'll run over there in Romans chapter 10 and 9 and you'll talk about that, how to be saved, but you don't want to take what he says over here in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 18, when, when he said, I thank my God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. But yet you're always talking about if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. Well, if you believe him over there in 10 and 9, Romans 10 and 9, you have to believe him over here in 14 and 18. He said, I thank my God that I speak with tongues more than you all. He spoke with tongues. What you going to do about that? You going to fight him on that? See, you want to pick and choose and believe what you want to believe because you haven't had the experience. And you want to lie and tell folks you have. You have not had the experience. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And that's prophecy. Hallelujah. I said you haven't had it. I pick it up in the spirit you haven't had it. Glory be to God. Now let's say that's discerning. All right. Now, look at, um, so he said, I thank my God that I speak with tongues more than ye all. All right. Now let's leave there and let's look at verse 36. Go down to verse 36. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right. He said, what came the word of God out from you or came it unto you only? If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. So what Apostle Paul has said in this word are the commandments of the Lord. We are to follow the word of the Lord that Apostle Paul has stated in this, in this book. All right? Glory be to God. Hallelujah. All right, look what he says in verse 38. He said, but if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. We're going to let Corey Minor be ignorant because that's what he is. He's ignorant concerning the word of the Lord. He does, know, does not know how to rightly divide the word of truth. He's so smart until he's ignorant. All right. Look at verse 39. Wherefore, brethren, covet prophecy and forbid not to speak with tongue. He says in verse 39, Apostle Paul says to covet. You know what the word covet means? It means to have a great desire. It means to have a great desire, a strong desire. He says, have a strong desire to prophesy. But he said, forbid not to speak with tongues. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You're, you're not going to forbid to speak with tongues anyway. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Because 
you are under the power of the Holy Ghost. Glory be to God. You are filled with the Holy Ghost and you're under the power of the Holy Ghost. You're walking in the Spirit. And as you walk into the in the Spirit, you're going to be subject to the power and the will of God. And when God choose to give you tongues, glory be to God, you're going to speak in the tongues. Glory be to God. You're not going to quench the Spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right. Now, let's leave there and let's go to um, Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1 and look at verse 13 and 14. Ephesians chapter 1 verses 13 and 14. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Fighting against God. Fighting against the word of God. Teaching contrary to the word of God. All these people hearing him and he's teaching against the word of God. Giving his own opinion. What he think. Instead of taking the word of God and teaching the word of God. Glory be to God. Alright, Ephesians chapter um, 1 verse 13. Let's look at it and see what it says. All right, it says, In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also, after ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Verse 14, Which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Now when a person is first saved. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. They are given a measure of the Spirit. Now, I have to question as to, as to whether Corey Minor even has a measure of the Spirit, as to whether he's even been saved. It appears to me he has not been saved. He should have stayed in Kojic where he was. He should have stayed with the Church of God in Christ. That's where he made his mistake. Anytime anybody is going to leave a spirit-filled church, a spirit-filled denomination, and go to a go, go back to a Baptist church, you're going backwards. Now, am I saying that all Baptist churches are, are not spirit-filled or, or, or there, there aren't any right or any spirit-filled churches? I'm, no, I'm not saying that. But at, for the most part, Baptist churches do not believe in being filled with the Spirit. And for him to leave a spirit-filled church and go back to a cold, dead Baptist church that does not believe in the spirit, it has to be cold and dead for him to be teaching the kind of stuff that he's teaching, don't believe in the spirit of God, in the evidence of speaking in tongues, which is the power of God, for him to be teaching that kind of stuff, he should have stayed where he is, and he has to be in a cold, dead church. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So it sounds like to me that he's backslidden. Based on what I can see and what I can pick up in the spirit, he is backslidden. If he ever been saved before. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And all of you that are sitting under his ministry and listening to him, you need to run from it. Until he repents and gets saved. Because there nobody is saved going against the word of God. Nobody is saved fighting against God. You can't be of the spirit and fighting against the spirit. Hallelujah. So we see here in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 that when you trust in the Lord, when you give your life to God, you are sealed with the spirit. You are given a measure of the spirit. Glory be to God. Now you're not filled with the spirit, but you're given a measure of the spirit. Glory be to God. So he says in verse uh, 14, he said, which is the earnest of, the, earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession until the praise of his glory. Hallelujah. All right. Now let's leave there because I wanted to point out to you how you are, when you are first saved or born again, you have a measure of the spirit. You're not filled with the spirit, but you're only filled with the spirit when you 
have the evidence of speaking in tongues. All right? Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Now let's take a look at um, verse 17 through 19 in that same chapter. Let's skip down to verse 17 through 19. So he says in verse 17, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Verse 18, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of your calling and what is the riches of the glory of the inheritance of the saints. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Glory be to God. We're talking about being enlightened by the power of the Holy Ghost. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You ought to have some kind of discernment to a degree when you first get born again. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. When you first get born again. Hallelujah. Now, we're not going to get a chance to talk about the Spirit, being filled with the Spirit. We're going to come back and talk about that. We're going to stop right here. We're going to come back with a part two. All right? We'll see you on the next video. God bless. Bye-bye.